Morning, Mark. Good morning, Frank. Good to see you. How you doing, mate? You well? Not too bad. It's been a few years, and it's really nice to be able to catch up. It's been it's been too long, mate. It's been too long. Well, thanks for doing this for me. It's really kind of you. So, um, obviously, I said in the intro, guys, Mark runs a uh, an extraordinary business, um, delivering. I'm going to get this wrong, Mark. So correct me. Extreme medical insight, knowledge, services, solutions to mad places around the world, under the sea, into space. I don't know. It kind of sums sums it up nicely. So what? We're, so we're the largest community of, you know, extreme medics, otherwise called maverick medics, I guess. Maverick. So I love that. It's those people who are attracted. They're all medical professionals, but they're attracted by the uh, what we would call the exciting end of medicine. So, the guys that respond to sudden sudden onset disasters like yeah. Ebola, like COVID, um, yeah. the people who um, are war medics working Af in Afghanistan or Iraq, people who work for as uh, medical professionals for organisations such as Medicine Sans Frontieres. But we also have within our ranks quite a few space uh, astronaut medics. Um, and we work with uh, Aquarius Reef, which is the, the world's only underwater habitat off the coast of Florida, which we use as a training venue, which is also used as pre-deployment training for the International Space Station by NASA. So it's did you, go, did, you went down in that last year, didn't you? Did you? Yeah, I was really fortunate to, to have a, have a um, become an honorary aquanaut and spend a night wow. in, the, in the station, which I, which I imagined, to, you know... I, it was really quite an extraordinary experience and far more impactful than I imagined because you're so used to diving and coming to the surface at the end of the dive, you go home, you have a beer, etc. Yeah. But to, to be in the reef base where you emerge into this submerged sort of habitat and then that isn't the end of the dive. You know, your dive is continuing because you're living in the habitat, watching life go by outside. And it is extraordinary the amount of life that circulates around one the reef itself where the base is but also the base because it's been there for so long and it was just absolutely absolutely amazing and a really quite a surreal and, and impactful experience so you are now officially an aquanaut i'm officially an honorary aquanaut because <laughs> if you to be an aquanaut you need to the, the base needs to be uh, set up for saturation diving you kind of then go you're looking into uh, being down there sort of for four or five days a week. That wow. time. So I'm an honorary aquanaut. I'm still pretty happy with. Brilliant. Well, you know, that sort of leads us quite well into maybe something we can talk about then, Mark. So I'm doing these interviews this week and next week and I, I'm talking to, to lots of different people. And the theme is resilience. Um, but just talking to people who've had different challenges and something that might be a little bit not the norm and what their personal view of resilience is and whether or not they've got any tools or tips that they can share with people because you know the, these videos are for you know people to watch and hopefully they get a bit of insight and learn a bit about you which would be great um but hopefully we could share a few positive tips and insights and and, and, and maybe add a little bit of value to somebody's world in these in these troubled times and, was, and the reason why i was so keen to speak to you, Mark, is obviously you've, you've run these incredible events and you, you've put on some incredible challenges, but actually your, your, your primary goal is delivering medical services and solutions to some of the most extreme places on the planet and, and putting, you know, sometimes yourselves in, yourself in harm's way and, and you've, you've physically been challenged mentally, mentally, physically and emotionally. And I think in also in these times of isolation, it can be quite tough to remain resilient when you're feeling quite isolated. And I know sometimes I feel more vulnerable as a person and as a dad and as a, a manager and as a you know husband and as a friend. I feel quite that can be quite tested the more isolated I become because I'm a very people focused person and uh, orientated person. So I was just wondering what your views on on isolation and, and, and how that helps in terms of managing resilience and, and reflecting on where we are today. I think, I think you're right. Um, and my career being um, based on expeditions, but also I did uh, 
special forces selection many years ago and that's primarily done as an individual so and the other bit is being a leader you tend to be isolated at the top no matter how sort of tight your team there's always a little bit of isolation so I yeah. guess for me isolation isn't so so unusual in some respects and there's a lot I have a lot of muscle memory for that in terms of being able to sort of slot into coping techniques that I've developed over time I've also had the benefit of talking to a number of um, adventurers over the last few weeks ourselves about how, what their coping techni uh, techniques are. So I spoke to Lou Rudd, who crossed Antarctica solo last year. I talked to Jason Fox from Who Dares Wins about sort of his experience, because he's quite an accomplished explorer as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, there, there is a very common theme, and, it, and I think they, the basic tenets of which are quite simple. And I think, like you, I'm a people person, so I struggle when I'm completely by myself. Unfortunately, you know, I'm isolating with my dog, my partner, and, and the kids, so the um, you know, social side of it is taken care of. Yeah. But it's managing those relationships as well, because inevitably, in a, in a close proximity with people, and expeditions are all about this is there's always a rub rub when you're tired when you're not sleeping well when you start not being able to see the the woods for the trees you know your interactions with the, your other team members can start setting start to get um impacted and i think that's a very typical and well-known sort of consequence and trait and process and i think one is identifying it that it happens to everybody it's just not necessarily not just you being slightly uh not a personal weakness in you it happens to everybody and yeah. it's getting techniques to deal with that and i think one of the there are a couple of key bits that i think are quite essential one is communication so it's it's um being honest with yourself but also communicating with the people around you mm -hmm. so if you are having a tricky time or something's bothering you it's to talk about it early rather than later and but and to talk about it you know and with with the kids so i guess I, we quite often every couple we will do a briefing about and almost almost kind of like a briefing okay this is what our expectate my expectations are this is what i'm planning to do to, to help you guys out this is what you know when we're going to go shopping this is what we need you know it's actually almost to kind of in that whilst it's called a bit it's just communicating with the people around you and getting their feedback as well you know and asking them to sort of feedback on on you and leave or le at least leaving those channels open so that they can say you're being a bit of a dick today you need to calm down back off you know all that yeah. sort of stuff yeah the other thing um and is to set yourself daily goals and i know that everybody says that and i think the trick with this is making them achievable and and not having too many to be honest so you know having a list of three or four things that you want to because this is a, a marathon not a sprint so you don't want your list to be 15 actually because you'll get through your stuff too quick so having a short list of um of projects you want to do and they can be quite small it can be the shopping it can be the dog walking it can be going out for a run a piece of exercise it can be uh sitting down at the table playing games with the kids yeah 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 one I, when i spoke to to lou rudd who uh, crossed antarctica last year solo one of the interesting things he said is he has a short list but he always leaves one thing unfinished that goes rolls over to the next day so he's always got a starting point for the next day which i thought was an interesting yeah. an interesting sort of concept um and then resilience is about not sweating the stuff that you've got no control over you know we don't have control over the virus well hopefully we'll do soon but we as individual yeah. state we don't to be honest have control over our income at the moment because yeah. we can't change what's going on around us and whilst it's very easy of course to say don't sweat the stuff you can't control you can't control that so it actually is trying to park that uh, and, and you know plan sort of coping and mitigating um, processes for that but not get sleepless nights so it's controlling the things you can control your immediate environment your relationships with your with the people you're sharing isolation with or if you're by yourself making sure that you're going outside enough to get regular exercise yeah. um, and then I think the the basic fundamental underlying foundation for all of that is making sure that you're getting enough sleep so yeah, yeah. exercising enough so that you're you're tired enough when you go yeah. to bed at night you're going to sleep regardless mm. um it's if you're having sleepless nights we're trying to set up a process for that so not looking at your phone too late at night trying to go to bed at the same time 
sleep underlies absolutely everything else both your you know how your personality is reacting to isolation how your body is reacting to isolation you know if you get enough sleep you've got the energy to cope with all of that if you get enough sleep you've got enough energy to go for a run and exercise it's a virtuous circle when the underlying foundation of sleep is there and i think that's probably the one thing that people need to think about most carefully and, and if they're not sleeping is reach out and get help which is available you know through, through organizations and and uh web resources yeah. um, that's the key thing i think is, is actually sleep yeah yeah and I, th I think for me what you said there is um that, that resonated with me mark is the more isolated i become the less likely is i communicate i, I get quieter in reality we should we need to try and turn that the other way around and get louder and, and, you know it's not louder but very much more open with with, with how we're feeling and thinking and then, and then again physically if you're not looking after the, the things the decompartmentalized things that help you be whole then then it, then it all breaks down doesn't it i think one of the silver linings of isolation is that it gives you time to reach out and communicate with people that you might not have spoken to for a little while and i think communication for us as a, um, well, as a species is essential i think um, even even if you are a loner you still need a degree of isolation whether whether that's with friends whether that's with family but i think making sure and not neglecting regular phone calls with people who are close to you and it might be quite a small circle of, of yeah. people I think that's really important for not only for your own mental health, but the person you're calling as well. Um, I know that um, yesterday I've got a, a couple of people that I ring virtually every other day or so. And I find that really, and this conversation is good to be talking outside of the other house, a so part of your isolation. It makes you realize there is an outside world yeah, that yeah. we are in the middle of something, but we will get to the other side. And I think by communicating outside of that house, it actually, you know, puts your mind into a slightly different state. And gives you some release from the pressure because you know this is just the thing we're in and, they, and it yeah. won't last forever. Well, Mark, I, I, I can't thank you enough for taking time out of your day. You're probably planning some mad expedition or trying to keep a thousand people alive or doing some mad things in remote areas, whether or not it's the Antarctic or space. But it's uh, what you do is incredible, buddy. And uh, I really thank you for, for sharing your insight today. It's an absolute pleasure, Fran, and, and uh, nice to be able to catch up. Cheers, buddy. High five. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Cheers, buddy. Bye-bye.